This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I wanted to answer the question, did the NSA create Bitcoin? As well as some related questions. A number of you have sent me this image and wanted me to talk about it. The NSA created Bitcoin? Question mark. We are led to believe that quote unquote Satoshi Nakamoto parenthesis pseudonym, created Bitcoin. However, this is a PSYOP. The elite would never allow some mystery man to come in change, come and change the worldwide financial order that they built and control. Thus, Bitcoin was planned and quote unquote Satoshi is simply a disguise for the elite. Evidence points to the NSA creating Bitcoin. In 1996, the NSA released this white paper called How to Make a Mint, the Cryptography of Anonymous Electronic Cash. It detailed blockchain tech and how to make electronic currencies. Furthermore, in 2002, the NSA created the SHA-256 algorithm, which is key in Bitcoin's architecture. Thus, they created Bitcoin to get the masses on the blockchain, prepare them for the CBDC and a cashless order. It's hard to know who would make an article like this. Are they interested in selling people bars of gold? Are they interested in something else as we're going to see? I take issue with a lot of these statements in here, in here, and I think there's a lot of faulty logic, which we're going to be talking about. First statement, the elite, quote, the elite would never allow some mystery man to come in and change the worldwide financial order that they built and control. First of all, I think it's important to recognize that there is no, quote unquote, the elite. There are lots of competing groups with different objectives. For example, CCP authorita authoritarians don't always agree with Washington, D.C. authoritarians or European authoritarians and vice versa. And then there are, of course, some more freedom-minded politicians that are mixed in, et cetera, that may be considered part of the quote-unquote the elites. Also, there are lots of different religions, tribes, blocks that are historical, artifacts, et cetera. And even the U.S. government is not a purely uniform creature. There are many different groups competing for control at each point in time. So this idea that the elite would never allow some mystery man to come in and change this order, I think this is a very uh, a typical type of defeatist thinking that we're seeing more often. It's a symptom of our age, unfortunately. And I think it's just not true. It's a little bit like saying the British would never allow some short bald guy who wove his own clothes to get them expelled from India. And that's true. They didn't allow it. But Gandhi came at the right time in history and was able to pull it off. And I think the same is true for Satoshi. Then there's this idea that Bitcoin was quote unquote planned by the elites. I don't really see this. In fact, the elites that I see, most of them really hate Bitcoin. For example, every single central banker in the world and their toadies, these are some of the elites. Jamie Dimon, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Paul Krugman, Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, who's been repeatedly trying to put a 30% tax on Bitcoin mining and thus drive it out of the US. Also, Donald Trump, maybe he's coming around to Bitcoin now, but when he was actually president, this is what he did. He told Mnuchin to quote unquote, go after Bitcoin. And so this is the more typical reaction I see from both sides of the aisle when it comes to the elites. They actually hate Bitcoin. The next accusation is that in 2002, the NSA created the SHA-256 algorithm, which is key in Bitcoin's architecture. Now, this is basically true. It looks like they're off by a year. This paper was originally published by researchers at the NSA in 2001. And what this is, is basically a mathematical procedure where you have an input, you do some fancy transformations to it, and then you end up with an output. And here's an example, here's an online calculator. And so I say Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. It hashes that information and spits out a 256 bit number. And this, these hashing calculators, this SHA-256 hash, as well as other hash algorithms are very sensitive to changing even the smallest amount of data. So if I add a period here, for example, you can see what the SHA-256 hash looks like now. If I just add that period at the end and calculate it, the hash is completely different. And there's really no way, even with quantum computers, to go from the output to the input. SHA-256, there's really no mystery about it. Here's an article that teaches you how to do SHA-256 by hand. So you could technically mine Bitcoin uh, using a pencil and paper, of course, at 0.67 hashes per day. You're not going to be able to compete with the machines doing this, but there's really nothing mysterious about SHA-256. SHA-256 is an example of something that is widely known as math and avoiding Bitcoin because it uses math that was developed by the NSA. It's about as dumb as not using the internet because its precursors were developed by DARPA or not using calculus because it was developed by two white men or not using algebra because it was developed under an Islamic caliphate, etc. SHA-256 math 
is now in the public domain. Anyone can use it. There's no special backdoor. You may hear this accusation any more than there's a special NSA backdoor to 2 plus 2 equals 4 or Y equals MX plus B. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to help out the channel by hitting the subscribe button, making sure you're still subscribed. If you've subscribed in the past, that's very, very helpful for this channel as well as leave a like, a comment, and share this video with a friend or family member. The accusation goes on next to talk about how this government paper, how to make a mint, the cryptography of anonymous electronic cash. This paper is basically an investigation of centralized mints, not decentralized distributed ledgers. So it's a fairly different topic. And at this point in time, when this paper was published, which was 1996, there was no practical solution for the Byzantine general's problem, which was one of many of Satoshi's breakthroughs. Now, Satoshi was certainly well read in the history of, and he was reading contemporary papers about e-money, cryptography, etc. But it seems like he created his invention by bringing together lots of weird things from different areas. It's almost like the Wright brothers. It's like he took a bicycle, added some wings, and then created an airplane, which could not really be envisioned if you just looked at a bicycle. It took some additional creativity. And I think that kind of tinkering and creativity is much more typical of smart individuals than bureaucratic government agencies. Bureaucrats, committees, rarely produce anything of value. Now, Satoshi himself, it's important to recognize he himself stands on the shoulders of giants, including Adam Back, who created Hashcash. Now, some people like this paper because they do some searches in it and they find that there's a reference to Tsatsuaki Okamoto, and they think this is somehow, uh, you know, Satoshi Nakamoto, this was his real name, and he changed it just a little bit in the white paper. If so, that'd be very bad, uh, very bad OPSEC, and it wouldn't make any sense either. So I think people who do searches like this are looking for searching for straws, basically, in the same way that people analyze Satoshi Nakamoto's name. So we have the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, people uh, fixate on central and intelligence, and then they do a search for Nakamoto, which means central or central origin, or one who lives in the middle. Nakamoto, uh, I'm sorry, Satoshi means intelligent or clever. In other words, intelligence. So they somehow think that this is a secret message that Satoshi Nakamoto is an allusion to the CIA. The problem with this is the human brain is really good at creating patterns or imposing logic where there is none. And one of the purposes of a general education and a good education is to give us better tools than this sort of thing. I think it's fine to look for hidden meanings like this. It can be a little bit fun, but it also might be a good idea to spend some time learning how Bitcoin actually works. If you want to get to the bottom of this, learn about blockchain, proof of work, difficulty adjustment, public private key cryptography, SHA-256 hashing, which we've talked about, what nodes are, what Bitcoin miners are, what various upgrades like SegWit and Taproot did, etc. If you're not going to do that and you're just going to do word games with the CIA and Japanese characters, it's not exactly impressive intellectual work and it shouldn't satisfy you. You should want to go a little bit deeper, especially if you're going to criticize something like Bitcoin. If you don't put in the hard work to learn how Bitcoin actually works, you're really wasting your time trying to find patterns in a pseudonym. Here's the final accusation. Thus, they created Bitcoin to get the masses on the blockchain, prepare them for a CBDC and a cashless future. Actually, it was more like PayPal, Apple, Venmo, Zelle, etc. that have prepared everyone for a cashless future. And the masses are still not on the blockchain. It seems like it's going to be a while until they are. Instead, they're buying the ETF, which is really just a Bitcoin IOU, or they're leaving their Bitcoin at Coinbase, or they're not really controlling UTXOs on the base layer. CBDC is just a central bank digital currency, just another form of fiat money with much more built-in surveillance. And so the Fed is definitely, definitely, and no central bank is going to build a CBDC on top of Bitcoin. This because Bitcoin has a fixed maximum supply of 21 million coins. It's not something that central bankers like. They like money with an infinite supply that they can print for themselves and those close to the money printer. They would never want their, their themselves to be constrained by Satoshi's parameters like 21 million. If you own some Bitcoin and hold it on a hardware wallet though, you don't need to worry as much about a CBDC. So this is the irony. If you're worried about a CBDC, you should actually be owning a lot of Bitcoin. And when CBDCs, as they get rolled out, they're a very, very good uh, ad for why you should own Bitcoin. 
If you own Bitcoin and hold it yourself, hold your own private keys on a hardware wallet like the Blockstream Jade or the cold card, your money cannot be debased by central bank or money printing, and you don't need to rely on a bank to send, receive, or store your money. So if you want freedom money, you should be running towards Bitcoin, not running away from it. Now, new technologies like Bitcoin can be scary for some people. They can also be exciting and liberating, but you need to actually learn how to think for yourself, which is not something that's really taught in schools or really anywhere else anymore. So some people are scared of Bitcoin, and this is how they react. They hire their prefrontal cortex to do the work that justifies the conclusion that was already reached by their amygdala, their rept reptilian brain. And this is often how we work. We decide emotionally to do something or at a very deep level of our brain, and then we later come up with, with rationalizations for it. And we pretend that the rationalizations are why we're acting when in fact it was something more emotional or deep-seated. So they hire the rational part of their brain to try to apologize or to justify what their emotional part of their brain has already decided. They desperately search out summaries like this on the internet that prove that Bitcoin is a scam without doing any basic research like reading the Bitcoin white paper. So I'd say in conclusion, did the NSA create Bitcoin? Almost certainly not. And even if they did, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who, who, who invented the wheel, for example, or who invented the ox cart, etc. We can use them. There's no backdoor in the wheel. There's no backdoor in the ox cart. There's no backdoor in Bitcoin. The code is open and viewable to anyone. Did the NSA create Bitcoin? Almost certainly not. Do the NSA and other government agencies and central bankers all around the world spread information, spread misinformation, I should say, about Bitcoin all over the internet? all the time. Yes, indeed, they do. And I would say that this is probably an example of that. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next vi video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.